Jedi Squadron is a podcast run by the Anime Secrets website. Check us out at AnimeSecrets.org for more anime, video game, tokusatsu, and now Star Wars content. Remember to follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts today. Hello, new Padawans, and welcome to the Jedi Squadron podcast. Here, you will be taking lessons in the many pieces of the Star Wars universe, whether it be the movies, animated series, video games, comics, and etc. This is your training into becoming a Star Wars fan as part of the Jedi Squadron. May your training go well, and may the Force be with you, young Padawans. What is going on, Star Wars Nation? This is the Jedi Squadron Podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Desa. And I am Rizwan Merchant. And today we are coming at you to review... Uh, what is the series one? Uh, no, uh, season one finale. Sorry, and season funnily one. Enough, <laughs> yeah. What's funny is that uh, the Star Wars. Well, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but uh, season one finale of uh, Star Wars Ahsoka. It is part eight. The episode is called "The Jedi, the Witch, and the Warlord." Which, right from the starting gate, we have a. Uh, a reference because that is a not so subtle reference to the first book in the Chronicles of Narnia book series, Second The book. Lion. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the magician's nephew. Yep. I uh, came out yep. before that. Uh, well, okay. So if you go chronologically, it's the second book, but by release order, it is the first book. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But the Lion, the Witch, the Wardrobe. I don't consider it first. I go by chronological for Narnia. Yeah. I'm not as big into the Narnia books as I am to Lord of the Rings, but I do know the basic gist of those. So, um, All I'm going to say on Narnia is I had my mind freaking blown away three weeks ago by an article online, and I still haven't recovered from it yet. Mm. Ask me hey. and on Facebook or Instagram if you want to know what the heck I found out that made me have such a mind-blowing moment. <laughs> But uh, right. okay, now, Back to now before, we get, uh, before we get started, uh, this uh, video is being done. Uh, so as we said in our last one, the uh, Writers Guild strike has ended. Uh, and we actually do have some good news with the Screen Actors Guild uh, strike. Um, it has apparently been said that, uh, you know, there's been a, a bargaining that uh, talk has been, uh, you know, that uh, talks are going to be, uh, you know, negotiations are going to be resuming on Monday, October 9th. So there is some progress being made with the Screen Actors Guild strikes, but they're still ongoing. And we support the Screen Actors Guild strike. One of their cast members, one of their members is the leading actress in Ahsoka, Rosario Dawson. And we want to make it clear that we stand with them. We're not doing this to promote any of Hollywood's work. We're doing this to promote the hard work of the actors without whose talents this show would not be possible here here all right so um the previous episode of ahsoka was uh, pretty was uh, pretty simple basically uh you know thrawn was so uh thrawn was pretty much obsessed with just trying to uh you know eliminate uh ahsoka and ezra before he escaped to uh you know, the main galaxy, Ahsoka arrived and we had a space dog fight and uh, she ended up reuniting with uh, Ezra and Sabine. And we got some big fights between, uh, you know, some of uh, the bandits that also attacked Sabine in episode six, plus, you know, a fight between uh, uh, Shin and uh, Ezra and Sabine. And that pretty much brought us to this one where they're trying to go home. So, um, so in this one, to kind of just, uh, su sum it up, uh, as best as we can. So, um, so the eye of Scion, that's the hyperspace ring that they use to, uh, arrive on, in the, uh, on Peridia. It's being prepared and, you know, all the cargo has been loaded up. So Thrawn is ready to, uh, is ready to go out and uh, is ready to leave. But first he wants to have Ahsoka eliminated because uh, he says that he doesn't want to be, have his actions thwarted by the heroics of a single Jedi, which that is a reference. Uh, I, you could say that the reference is the fact that Ezra single-handedly defeated Thrawn by dragging him to this planet in the first place with the Purgles, but 
Kanan also outsmarted Thrawn by summoning Bindu in the Battle of Adalon. So he yeah. could be referring to that too. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so as they're getting ready, uh, you know, when th- um, so Ezra makes himself a new lightsaber, which is kind of a mix. Bet- he gets a new emitter where he, uh, you know, he builds a blue one. He gets an emitter that looks exactly like Kanan's lightsaber. And it, his new lightsaber, which is blue, is kind of a mix between a Kanan, uh, between a Kanan's lightsaber and his green one that Sabine is using, which is pretty cool. And I'll talk about a cool joke that they make about the, it this in a little bit. Um, we, uh, we learn a little bit more about... Uh, so... One of the one of the problems I have with this is that uh, Hu Yang kind of d- talks about Ahsoka and Sabine and like their training, and apparently it's revealed that Ahsoka left Sabine because she was afraid that Sabine was trying to become a Jedi for the wrong reasons. Which, yeah, okay, I like this, but shouldn't Ahsoka be? the one revealing this, not Hu Yang. Like, wouldn't it be more powerful if Ahsoka was bringing that it up? It would have been way more powerful. Um, but I think Ahsoka is more concerned right now with being an ally to Sabine and trying to support her because she does have a line one or two scenes after this where she and Sabine are talking on top of the uh, star ship. Yep. And she tells her, I'm not going to abandon you. Uh, I'm going to stand by you just like my master stood by me. And I think C will not bring up the fact that Sabine was tethering on, potentially going on the dark side path. Mm-hmm. Just because she doesn't want to talk shit on the person she's sworn to support no matter what. Yeah. So I I think it's okay that He Yang brought it up given that. I have no heartburn with it. I thought it was okay. Um but yeah, no, from a aesthetics of writing standpoint, I do agree with you. It would have been more powerful to get that earlier on in the season, first of all. And then um have Ahsoka and Sabine discuss it at least once on screen. But the fact that they didn't do that is also okay with me in the end. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And by the way, the reason why was because, uh, you know, she was afraid that uh, she wanted to become a Jedi to get revenge after the great purge of Mandalore. Because they established uh, earlier in the season that her whole family was wiped out, the Ren clan. So uh, we get a moment between Ren and Ahsoka. This is something that Riz just mentioned where they're talking about the hull where, you know, they kind of make amends. Sabine apologizes that she didn't destroy the star map. And, you know, she says that she's, uh, you know, been trying to uh, do better with her training. Uh, they got to make a really cool reference. Uh, Ahsoka says, have you been keeping up with your training? And then Sabine says, I try. And then Ahsoka gives her a look, and then she says, I do. Which, if you're a Star Wars fan and you don't get the line that she's trying to, that she's making a reference to, you are not a real Star Wars fan. But in case you need you need me to spell it out for you, what is one of Yoda's most famous lines from The Empire Strikes Back? Do or do not. There is no try. So, yeah, I, I-, I love that. I loved that line. That was so awesome. That's a really good little Easter egg line that I didn't really think about until right now. Like, it didn't occur to me to think of that line in reference to Yoda when I first heard it. I just thought, oh, okay. I think Kanan Kanan also, I think, said it in Rebels, too. So it makes sense why. Yeah, Kanan definitely said it. it. Yeah. Um, So then they get attacked by two Imperial fighters, which, uh, you know, shoot down their ship and, you know, severely damages it. Uh, you know, they're unable to, uh, they're unable to fix it. So they help the Nadi evacuate and, uh, they, um, they managed to, uh, they managed to get the ship, uh, working just enough to, uh, 
ram the TIE fighters and take them out, but it causes the ship to be like severely damaged. And then they decide, okay, we're going to go after, uh, you know, we're going to go after Thrawn. But before they do that, uh, the great mothers actually perform a, a blessing on Morgan Elsbeth. And this is literally the exact same blessing that they perform on uh, Asajj Ventress um, at, I can't remember what episode and season it was, but I do remember it happening because it was a huge moment in the series where Asajj Ventress has the, uh, what is called the, hold on, let me uh, make sure I'm saying this right. Uh, the gift of shadows ritual. Now, oh yeah, it's kind of, now it's weird because when Asajj Ventress has it performed on her in that there's a lot more magic on display, like there's green, like, you know, energy floating all around her there's not as much against morgan elsbeth but when asajj ventress comes out of the gift of shadow she looks completely more normal morgan elsbeth has like all these pale burn marks on her face which is kind of weird but what do you why do you think that is because i never did understand why it affected her differently i mean does Morgan Elsbeth look like she's human, and maybe that's why it had an effect? Because well, Asajj, Vin- Asajj Ventress looked much more like a Dathomiri than a human, so maybe well, that's why. But that's what I was kind of thinking because I thought Asajj Ventress was a offshoot of the Dathomir's like race. Like I don't know if she is a I don't know if she is of the Night Sister race. But she certainly has a lot of qualities of that race. And if that's the case, then that would explain why she could handle being given the gift and why uh, Morgan Elsbeth could not. Well, they're saying uh, here on the Wikipedia, and I'm looking up that her race is a Zabrak, which is the which is a native species to a Dathomir. And You're talking about Thought Ventress? Yeah. Okay. And... She is also part of Mother Talzin's clan. Yeah. No, that I, that's what I was trying to remember. I figured that was correct. And then Morgan Elsbeth, according to this, is human. So maybe that's the case. That, that could be it. Um, it. It's interesting though, right? Like, yeah, that's not something I gave a lot of thought to until you mentioned it right now. Mm-hmm. But, hey, that makes perfect sense to me. Yep. So anyway, to continue, uh, she's also given a uh, a new weapon called the uh, Blade of... Wait, hold on. Let me make sure I'm saying this right. The, uh, the Blade of Talzin. And yeah. this is a sword that we've seen before. It was used by its namesake, Mother Talzin in the Clone Wars animated series, and she actually used this blade to a dual Mace Windu at one point in yeah. the Clone Wars series, so that's pretty cool. Um, it's a green flame sword, so pretty much the rest of the episode, at least a good chunk of it, is just one big fight. Uh, you know, Ahsoka, Sabine, and Ezra, they all storm into the uh, tower where the Chimera is preparing to take off. Um they have to fight through all these death troopers, but then, you know, even though they kill them all, the great mothers perform another magic spell to revive them, which confirms that these death troopers are zombies. And this yeah. is all, and also, this is something that the Night Sisters have done before, using magic to revive dead zombies. They did it in the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling this, this for you, Riz, but they do it in Jedi Fallen Order. So I already knew that. Okay. Um, this is also a reference back to the Star Wars Legends novel, Death Troopers by Zoe Stryber. Yep, yep. Which I really want to read, because that's a horror story set in the Star Wars universe. And from what I've read, it's inspired in part by movies like Alien and The Signing. Oh, Lord. I... So it's it was been the on my scariest list of movies ever for a while. Like, once I isn't get through it, all the Thrawn books, I might have to go read that book first. Isn't it fitting how they have these this type of episode 
in October, just before yeah. Halloween. Because this is about as close to like a Halloween themed Star Wars show as you can get in the context of the Star oh, yeah. Wars universe. So that's just awesome. Um, so they storm inside. Uh, they get cut off by Mother Talzin. No, 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 not Mother Talzin. Uh, Morgan Elsbeth wielding the blade of Talzin. And Ahsoka has to fight. Ahsoka fights Morgan Elsbeth herself while um, Sabine and Ezra try to get to the ship. Uh, and during the fight, a lot of things happen. So at one point, uh, when they're fighting against two zombie death troopers, Sabine is finally able to use the force. She's she's being choked by one of them with her lightsaber knocked away, and she, in desperation, uses the force to call her lightsaber to her hand. And okay, before we continue, I just I, I really have to just say something that I saw online that just really bothers me. People are saying that it makes no sense how Sabine could do that when she's had very little training. Okay, guys, here we can go. I, can I remind you something? Luke did the exact same thing in The Empire Strikes Back. And how much training did he have? Zero. He only got some basic understanding of the Force from Obi-Wan. Now, I know how he was able to do that because I actually read the book uh, that takes place between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back where he kind of, you know, he's practicing the Force like self-taught. But yeah. he was self-taught. He's able to do that. Sabine had Kanan train her for a little bit. Ahsoka train her for a little bit. Maybe she even got a few tips from Ezra. That's three people that taught her how to potentially use the Force. Well, so okay, idea, not only that, not only that, because you got to remember, Kanan only trained Sabine directly for like a day or two, right? Yeah. So... But you have to also remember, Sabine spent, like, what, two, two, three years with Ezra and Kanan, and was around Kanan teaching Ezra, and Ezra trying to apply the lessons he's learning from Kanan. Yep. And Sabine and Ezra are close, so Ezra will talk to her about some stuff every now and then. So, it's not like Sabine's a foreigner to the Force. She's literally grown up around people in the Force most of her life. And it's not only that, but, like, her being able to do that, like, Luke was able to call his lightsaber to his hand in the Wampa Cave in The Empire Strikes Back. That was a life-or-death situation, because if he didn't call his lightsaber, he would have been eaten by the Wampa. It's yeah. the same thing here. If she didn't call her lightsaber to her hand, she would have died, and... I actually think that it's quite common in a lot of Star Wars stories for people who struggle to use the Force being able to use it to some extent in a life or death situation. Yeah. I mean, I have no issue with her doing that. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I just, I hate how people are saying that that, like, ruins Sabine and how it's just plot convenience. Like, guys, this has been done in Star Wars several times. Stop. Yeah. P please stop. Also, need I remind you of everyone's favorite Mary Sue, Ray. Ray well, is yeah. very similar at one point. But yeah, but I don't think Ray is a Mary Sue. Well, everyone calls her Mary Sue. Yeah, because <laughs> I I personally don't have I don't have issues with Ray until the third movie in the sequel trilogy. Oh yeah, and I have so many I, I'm back to reading Shadow of the Sith, and I'm actually hoping to finish it next week. And I love that book, but that book gives me so many issues with the third movie. But I'll, but that's a video for another time. Um, you and I are going to have a lot of fun doing that once I read the book. Yep. So anyway, uh, so they fight off the two Death Troopers, but uh, and then they try to enter the ship. Uh, uh, Ezra actually does enter the chimera as it's taking off. Uh, he does a force jump, and Sabine force pushes him onto the ship, but she's not able to come because Ahsoka gets cornered by Morgan Elspeth. Morgan Elspeth actually destroys uh, Ahsoka's Shoto lightsaber. Uh, I, Ahsoka, at originally she only used one lightsaber, but then at some point she has like a shorter second lightsaber that she started using in the Clone Wars. So that's just kind of been her style, but now she just lost her shorter one 
it's called a Shoto lightsaber. Uh, that one gets destroyed, and she helps. Um, she help. Um, she helps. Uh, you know, Ahsoka fight off Morgan Elspeth, and you know, meanwhile, um, uh, and they actually kill uh, Morgan Elspeth. They uh, they stab. They slice her across the waist with uh, with the lightsaber, and they sent uh, the great mothers who are on board since the death of their sister, but. Thrawn just writes off her death saying, hey, I mean, Morgan Elspeth did what, did what she was supposed to do, which is yeah. kind of shows that he's just using these people. Um, Ezra impersonates a night trooper, which is Ezra impersonates Imperial troopers all the time. I mean, I literally pointed this out in the first episode. He has a collection of Imperial helmets. <laughs> so <laughs> do you think he's going to keep that death trooper helmet, by the way? Yeah, he will. <laughs> yeah. He has to, because his collection is still intact on uh, Lothal. Mm-hmm. So, so, it makes sense. I could see it. So, Ahsoka and Sabine get the ship working, and they try to chase uh, the Eye of Scion, but unfortunately, um, they're not able to because the Eye of Scion gets working uh, Thrawn actually taunts her for a little bit. This is the first time that Ahsoka's ever met Thrawn, by the way. She never met him in a... Well, of course she never met him in Rebels, because she stopped... She supposedly died at the end of Season 2, and uh, Thrawn didn't come in until uh, until uh, Season 3. So that makes yeah. sense. Uh, but he actually taunts Ahsoka, saying that he knew her master, uh, Anakin mm -hmm. and knew what he became, which is a reference to the book that Riz is reading, Thrawn Alliances. Well, so. it's a reference to many things, but yeah, Thrawn Alliances is one of them. It's also referencing in part the prequel Thrawn trilogy, because I think in that we at least have a scene, if not more of a book. I don't know much details about it. Where Anakin and Thrawn meet. Uh-huh. So, yeah, there's definitely a lot of time where Thrawn and Anakin spent together. Yeah. So, Thrawn says, Long live the Empire. And uh, he... And the Eye of Scion escapes into hyperspace and leaving Ahsoka and Sabine trapped on Peridia. Uh, we get some uh, aftermath scenes where uh, they arrive, where they arrive on Dathomir. Um, Ezra leaves the uh, Ezra leaves, and he actually arrives on Home One, where he's reunited with Hera and Chopper. Which <laughs> I have to question Ezra's logic on entering that ship in armor. Like, why do you do that? Because like. This is the first time that he's seen Hera in like five years, and she's pointing a blaster at him. Like, yeah, yeah, that's kind of messed up, isn't it? A little bit, a little bit. And I'll, well, I'll talk more about how I feel about that later. But, uh, but uh, the episode ends with uh, Sabine and Ahsoka. They're at the naughty camp, and they have to move on. And uh, their situation looks bleak as they're trapped on Peridia. And they don't really know uh, what they're going to do. But Ahsoka is optimistic that they'll find a way home. And she briefly sees... Uh, what is the... Um, at one point, she the one thing that makes her... Uh, um, you know, feel some optimism is that she sees the owl. What's the name of the owl again, Riz? Mora? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Sabine actually senses something, but she doesn't elaborate... And we actually find out as Ahsoka is turning away, the thing that she sensed, Anakin is watching them. As which, a ghost. yep. Which, which confirms isn't this, many things. Isn't this so insane? How we were like everybody was contemplating: How is Anakin going to appear? Are we going to see him physically? Are we going to see him in Clone Wars flashbacks? Are we going to see him as a Force spirit? Are we going to see him as a hologram? And the answer to that question is yes. yes. We see him as everything in this show. <laughs> we see him physically in the war, in the world between worlds. We see him in Clone Wars flashbacks. We saw him in a hologram in one episode, and we just saw him as a Force ghost. So, 
we saw him in every single form that people were expecting to see him the, in. The only Anakin we didn't see is zombie Anakin. Yeah, but that's fine. But I don't want zombie Anakin, so I'm happy where we are. And this really opens up the door for some very interesting stories in the future if people play their cards right. Mm-hmm. Like, I could see some novelist go off and do a story with Luke communing with Anakin to gain more knowledge and to gain wisdom from his father. I could see Ahsoka and Anakin communing more often in season two of Ahsoka or the Mandalorian movie or whatever we go to from here. Mm -hmm. So I don't think Hayden Christensen is done. No, I don't think he is either. I I think he's around for the long haul now. But I do think they're going to get a season two because for starters, even though the viewership didn't kick off as great as it does, like it was still very popular. It's getting good reviews and it has good viewership. But here's the big thing. So the official Star Wars Twitter on the day that the episode dropped, it said, enjoy the series finale of Ahsoka. But then they actually took that tweet down and changed it to the season yeah finale so and so i think they're i think they're just they're probably waiting for the screen actors guild strike to end but i do think that they're gonna do a season two well i mean i think they have a game plan to do everything um i don't know how much this affects the star wars stuff but i know disney released a statement a while back saying they're going to reduce the amount of Marvel stuff coming out every year because people are getting oversaturated and not nothing is getting watched enough to warrant the amount of money coming out because everyone's getting burnt out by trying to keep up. I mean, I mean for God's sake, Loki just started like two nights ago or something. I think last night. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, I honestly haven't been keeping up with the MCU since Endgame came out. So I I'm selective these days. I used to watch everything the MCU released, TV show, movie, everything. But then after the Spider Man movie, I kind of pick and choose what I watch. And so like, I didn't watch Falcon and Winter Soldier. I didn't watch um, Wandavision. Ant Man movie. I watched Wandavision. I didn't want to, but I did. Well, okay, I didn't like it. Is a better way to put that. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't like the Doctor Strange movie either, but that's a whole different topic for a podcast I don't know how I'm going to do because we don't have a Marvel podcast. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we could talk about that at some other point and maybe... Yeah, we'll talk about it offline or... and just hang out. We don't need a podcast for Marvel. I don't um, want to do a Marvel podcast. But want... the, the point of what I was saying was not to talk about Marvel, but it was to say Disney is taking stock of their properties and trying to rework their game plan and their path forward with Marvel. And I'm kind of thinking the same is true for Star Wars. So we may not get like three TV shows in the same year because so far this year we've had Mando, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka. Well, Obi-Wan came out last year. We had two series come out this year. Well, isn't Skeleton Crew supposed to come out this year? So technically, you are allegedly, gonna... but also oh. that the strikes might have affected it. But like, yeah, but I we're still know. getting two shows a year because last year we had Book of Boba Fett. Oh, okay, well, technically, yeah. Book of Boba Fett started at the end of 2021, but then it like, but then it like seeped into 2022. Yeah, and then we had Obi Wan. So. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, I I just think that, and to, to kind of preview what I'm going to say about this, like, I feel like they probably should take a break and, like, maybe not do two shows every year, but they should also stop limiting themselves to just eight episodes, in my opinion. And, you know, to kind of segue into, uh, I, I just kind of want to segue, I kind of want to use this to segue into the, uh, 
you know, this uh, final episode, like, you know, since we've kind of put it off a, a little bit long, like, I'm going to start off like, I honestly think that this, um, that I, I don't want to say that I dislike this episode, but I feel like I'm, I feel like Ahsoka is the show that gets hurt by this eight episode format because like they they created so many great things, but and hopefully they do a season two. So I mean, I'm it leaves me wanting more, but like I just feel like this finale kind of missed the boat on a lot of things. Like I mean, for starters, and this is something that I really don't like, Shin and Balin only appear they probably have like a combined shared screen time of like two minutes and in this episode like, you mean yeah yeah no i agree really frustrates me because those two people well okay maybe not shin i feel like she needs to be expanded upon a little bit more but yeah balin like i was really praying like please don't let balin's story like end on an open end like i mean just give him a good send off or something nope he ends by standing on two statues of the father and the son, which looks very similar to these statues that we see in Lord of the Rings, which is just kind of further it shows that Merid like Peridia is supposed to be based on Middle Earth. I, I don't remember what the names of those statues are, but if you've seen the Fellowship of the Ring, you're talking like, about there's these two statues with their hands raised. Um, also, in the background, I don't know if you caught it, Nate, but the the sister statue is in the background destroyed. Yeah. 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 I was about to mention that. Yeah. And I, while we're on a side note, pe people are saying this about Balin skull and I'm actually all for it. People are saying that they, they don't want to just have Balin skull be written off, like just discarded, like how uh Cara. Okay. I know this is a bad example, but the Cara Dune character who was played by Gina Carano and the Mandalorian, who's just been discarded. Like, don't do yeah. that. Like people are saying that they should recast Balin and have him continue his story. And they're suggesting that they have the uh, actor, uh, what's his name? Uh, Leave Schreiber uh, play him. Leave Schreiber. Uh, some people may know him. He played Sabretooth in the uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine movie. I know. Yeah. I know people don't like that movie, but he does look like he could pass for Ray Stevenson. He could. So, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Um, and I liked him as Sabretooth. I, I, I actually think that that movie, okay, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that movie, but I did like him as Sabretooth, honestly. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen the movie, so I wouldn't know. But yeah, I, I would love to see him as uh Balin skull. Cause I don't know, like Ray made Balin like one, like a very relatable and amazing villain. And it would just be ashamed for them to just discard him because of Ray's unfortunate death. Yeah. Do you think they should recast him? I I think yeah, they should. I saw a photo of somebody. I'm trying to find the actor's name again. It wasn't the one you said, but there is a guy that they had found who looks very similar to him, like eerie similar. So I I think they can recast him, and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But I understand why people may not want, um, why they wouldn't want that. I mean, I, I just think that it's, I just think it's kind of crucial because I really don't want them to, like, if Balin Skull died here and, you know, you gave him that, like, send-off, then I'd be fine with that. But you don't kill him. You leave his character open-ended. Like, y you have to continue his story. Because, yeah. you did. Because like, you made this guy probably, like, one of the best live-action Star Wars villains. We've, like, this guy is on par with, like, Vader in terms of, like, great villains. And honestly, I mean, I kind of tend to find him to be a bit more compelling than Vader just because his story, like... Like, I don't know, one of my friends, like, what are we, like, was kind of talking with me about this at one point. Like, it's hard to be rooting for Ahsoka when you agree with half the stuff. 
that yeah. Balin is saying. So you can't let a character that you've written so well just be discarded like that. No, and I mean, there's different ways you can bring Balin back. Like, you could, you could have a scene... <sighs> okay. You could recast Balin temporarily for a little bit to sew some footage of Balin transforming appearance to be more like the father and continue on in that form after. Mm-hmm. Because I get the feeling... Okay, so one theory I read that I liked a lot is that the Mortis trio are going to be given new avatars in the form of Ahsoka as a daughter. Very obvious, given Mora follows Ahsoka through everything post that episode in Clone Wars. You see her in Rebels, you see her in Mando, you see her in Book of Boba Fett, you see her in her on TV show. Yep. So very clearly, she is the daughter reincarnate somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Balin is the son, the way I'm reading it. And then Anakin has been said to be the father as he's the bringer of the balance of the force as the chosen one. Yeah, that makes sense. So I like that theory, except for the fact that Anakin is dead. But the the force ghost is definitely still around. I mean, that last scene proves it. And just because you died doesn't mean you couldn't still be the avatar of it. You could be a force ghost avatar for all I know. I, I, I don't know. There's still some wiggle room there, so it's possible we get some crazy thing like that in the future. Mm-hmm. And then there's also talk of Abeloth from the Legends continuity being brought in, and C is being theorized to be akin to the mother of this Mortis family. But I don't think that would... Well, okay, I don't know much about Abeloth because um, she was mostly a villain in like the comics in Legends, but from what I know, she was a servant of what is basically the Mortis family's equivalent in Legends. And yeah. then she bathed in a force nexus that was made of both light and dark side energy, which turned her into like a supernatural creature. So Abeloth will definitely play a huge role in this, like if they try to like reincarnate the Mortis trio, but I don't think yeah. she would be the mother. No, I think she'll be involved in it somehow, though, if they bring back Abeloth. I don't know a lot about her. I've just read what I know, what I know about her is from the Wikipedia. And I mean, if they do have Abeloth, I mean, you would, I mean, it, it's too late to have her in like the sequel trilogy story since that's been completed. But like, they're talking about doing like a Ray trilogy now, like Abeloth being the main villain there would be amazing. Well, they are doing the Ray movie. I don't know if they're doing a trilogy though. Well, it, whether it's a movie or a trilogy, yeah. it would. And see, that that's kind of what I'm wondering here. So... I think you and I talked about this offline. Maybe it was in episode 7's recap. I don't remember where we talked about it. But one possible path. So last time. Okay, yeah, I remember now. Last time I, we talked about this on the podcast. I said one possible ending to season one of Ahsoka is the crew gets stranded on the planet. And they're not able to go back to their main galaxy. Well... I'm mostly correct in that. The only person who didn't get stranded is Ezra, but Ahsoka and Sabine are stranded. Yep. And that kind of helps the sequel trilogy a little bit with continuity. Um, because if they don't come back for like, you know, 20, 25 years, or however yeah. long it takes until the sequel trilogy happens. It would be 25 years. Yeah. So if they come back like, you know, 27 years later, then they could help Ray with whatever Ray has to do. Yeah. Granted, Ahsoka yeah. would be super old. 
but that just makes it even better because she's like an even wiser Jedi. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, know, how, I don't know how her race ages there. Like, is, do they age like humans or do they age? That I'm not sure about. Like, I don't, I don't know how they age. I, I like how we're both looking it up right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm look. So. Um, but yeah, no, it's just interesting. I, I, if, because if she doesn't age the way that humans do, then she's still very viable to help Ray and be a fighter in that next conflict. But it they also s- sucks because she's not able to continue on the Thrawn story in present time. So they say that the average lifespan of a Togruta is ninety five is ninety four years. So av- so to human. Yeah, but she, I I don't know how, I don't how okay. Ahsoka was a teenager during the Clone Wars, so she would probably be in like her thirties or forties at this point. So if I math correctly, the other day I put her around thirty five to forty. Okay, then I mean you add twenty five. I mean she's sixty five. She's like middle aged at that point. Uh, yeah, in the sequel trilogy. Yeah, so it's possible. Um, well, then, how long be... would Ray's trilogy be after the sequel trilogy? Well, I'm hoping it's not more than like five years after or something. Yeah, maybe like ten years at most. Well, because I think Ray's movie is her trying to rebuild the Jedi Order. Yeah. Again. Well, hopefully we'll see how that goes. I just yeah. Well, she is a Skywalker I, now, so she I'll, can do that. Well, all, all I ask is that, like, for that is that I mean, I, I back it completely. Just have people in the same room so that they can have like one coherent story from start to finish. Like, don't bring, like, don't bring in like if you're going to do a trilogy, don't bring in one guy to direct two movies, like the first and third movie and then have a completely different guy direct the yeah. second movie. Like if you want to have Ryan Johnson, Ryan Johnson direct the whole trilogy, do it. I, I like yeah. Ryan Johnson, but just, just have one person do it. Don't have this back and forth like we did last time. Yeah. It doesn't help. But, but, but to kind of, uh, I know that we kind of went into like, I kind of, um, I kind of, uh, you know, we kind of went off on a tangent after I brought up the stuff with Shin and uh, Balin. Like, uh, Riz, what, what you kind of uh, went off for a second. Like, what did you think of this Ahsoka episode? Just to get a little bit back on track. I I liked it. Um, I don't have anything that was like something that frustrated me or bugged me as much. Um, my biggest complaint is the same one you raised about Sin and Balin getting very little screen time. Because if you really think about their story, we don't get a lot of Sin and Balin, really. Like, we don't know anything about Sin. Balin, we barely scratched the surface of the guy, and he's after it's now dead. So we don't really have much of an idea of what Balin's after, what is he up to, where does Sin go from here? Because obviously Sin and Valen split up at the end. Mm-hmm. Because Sin has gone off to rally the Marauders to do something. Yeah. Um, probably battle Ahsoka and Sabine. But no, I, I liked it. Um, I liked the references back to the Death Troopers. I thought Ezra's story with Kanan's lightsaber... Like building his own lightsaber into in the style of Kanan was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked Hera and Ezra meeting for the first time, and Sopper immediately knowing this is not some stormtrooper; it's freaking Ezra. Like he just walks up and like Sopper, womp 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 womp. I don't know what he was saying there, though, but I'm sure YouTube will have a Sopper talks episode for like video for that sooner or later. Yeah. I I feel like that like there's moments that I like about this episode, but then there's also moments that I don't like. I don't know. I feel like I feel like so I'm cool with the fact that Thrawn escaped, but Ahsoka and Sabine are left. But like I would have liked 
I feel like there's a little too much. Okay. The funny thing is that there's Star Wars fans who would think that this is fine, but I don't. The entire second half of this episode is just action, action, action. Not really enough character stuff. And yeah. like, and then when it finally, the action does end, it just leaves stuff open ended. Like Ezra goes and meets Hera, but it doesn't end up really, but we don't really know how that's going to end up. And Sabine and Ahsoka are trapped. Like, and I'm glad because, you know, that leaves me suspend, you know, wanting more. And that, that's ultimately why I do like this episode because it leaves me wanting more, but I just feel like yeah. we could have gotten more. Like, well, and I, I'm, I'm completely frustrated that Valen and Shin don't get that much screen time. That's what really bogs this episode down for me. Yeah, but on the plus side, this can be seen as a setup for um, the next season or the movie or something. So Which is I'm not. Thing. I'm not against it because not everything has to be the end all be all. We need something to build up a story. And I think all of these different Mando verse style TV shows have one path leading to uh, the, the Dave Filoni movie. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I could see. I mean, I'll like, we'll have to see how all these other shows work out, but. Yeah, because the only thing I don't know right now is how the skeleton crew will fit in, if it fits in at all. I mean, it could be that Thrawn is kind of an adversary to the skeleton crew, for all we know. Or it's referenced at least a little bit, you know? Yeah, just... But, I mean, like I said, I mean, this episode leaves me wanting more from Ahsoka and leaves me wanting, yeah. like, you know, wanting answers. So, I mean, if I want more from something, then it's obviously a good thing. Oh, yeah, 100%. I want more of this, like, right now. But, but yeah, I would, I would, pro- but this definitely needs a season two. Like, and I'm not saying that, like, everything needs a season two. Like, honestly, if Obi-Wan Kenobi never gets a season two, I'm fine with that because they kind of closed that series off perfectly. Like, I, I don't... If I can see Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi again, cool. But I don't need a season two to that. I feel like it's it's it ended pretty handedly. But this, yeah. like, we need a continuation of this story. Yeah, definitely. What, what would you give this episode out of ten? I am thinking probably an 8.5. I'm going to give it an 8 um, just because, I don't know, like, I know I keep obsessing over this, but the fact, like, if Balin and Shin were in it a little bit more, maybe I'd give it a 9, but they're not, yeah. so. No, I, that that's respectable. I, I definitely agree with why you think that and why you want that to be the, the case. Because I'm sorry, but like ba- Balin and Shin are like the big breakout characters of this. Because like I find Balin's motivation and his backstory just fascinating. And Shin, I mean, well, I mean, there are some people who, you know, just like her because she's very pretty, which she is. But she's yeah. also like, there's just something about her with like what her is that I want to know what she's all about. Like what makes her come off as so unhinged and crazy where she's like literally this psycho dog being held back on a leash by the more calm and collected Balin. Because you could tell that like she would have killed Sabine in like the third episode if Balin oh, didn't 100%. Her back. like yeah so this woman is like a rabid dog on a leash being held back by yeah. a more calm owner. Yeah. And I want to see more of it. Like plus I mean her her actress acts the role perfectly. Like, I, like she reminds me a lot of this one character from Fallen Order. I'm not going to reveal her name, but like, she's both she's pretty, but she's also creepy. Like, okay, you're pretty, but please don't look direct me at, at me with those eyes. It's scary, but then again, you are the villain, so it's kind of fitting that you're scary. You know what yeah. I mean? No, definitely, yeah. Yeah, th- th- there's this one villain. I'm not gonna. Re- I'm not gonna reveal her name because I don't think Riz is that far enough in Fallen Order. But no, I'm not. 
let's uh let's not mention that but uh but what did we think like so i do feel i whether it's going to be a season two or just a continuation in the movie like what do we think of like ahsoka as a whole like what do you think Riz? i i loved it i thought this is probably the better of the uh recent tv shows we've gotten mm-hmm uh, Book of Boba Fett was a massive disappointment. Obi Wan fell sort of a mark to me. Mandalorian has been up and down from the beginning, mm-hmm. so it's hard to really nail down, um, you know how I feel about the Mandalorian seasons because one, one is a season one's really good. Season two was all right. Season three is pretty dang good, I think. So, it but Ahsoka hits all the right marks. It does all the right things. Um, I, I just think we need more time with Ahsoka. Yeah. And I kind of have a... Well, I do think that this is the best of the Star Wars Disney Plus shows. Um, I, and I do think it's better than knowing Andor, okay? I know there's people who think, like, Andor is love, Andor is life. I respect your opinion, guys, but I don't agree with it because it's kind of boring thus far. But I can't get into uh, it. I'm sorry. I mean, I, the Disney Plus shows have been hit and miss with me. Like, I liked the first season of Mandalorian good. I I really liked season two. Um, I, I'll defend Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think it's a lot better than people give it credit for, but... I've watched it twice and I'm going to watch it a third time when Riz and I decide that we want to watch when Riz and I watch it. And I realize that it has problems. So yeah, but yeah. now, now I'll defend it, but I ultimately realize that it's not like, it's not something on par with like the clone wars or the empire strikes back or something, but yeah, this is the best of a Disney plus shows, but I do want to say that like, it's, it leaves me wanting more and I know, I know I sound like a broken record with this, but like I want a lot more than what I'm getting from this show. And you know what, maybe when they give me a season two or if they give, when they, when I get a continuation, maybe I'll get that more and I'll look back at this and I'll say, you know what, this is one of the greatest things in star Wars that I've ever seen, but I can't say that right now. I love it. I think it's great, but is it would I put this on par with the Clone Wars or honestly even Rebels? Not not yet. Maybe no. maybe with time I I will depending on how it ultimately goes from here. But if I'm judging it by season one, I I there's just some stuff missing from it right now that I can't. Yeah, that prevents me, and I don't want to badmouth it. It's great rosario dawson is a great actress as ahsoka i love uh natasha lou uh i can't remember her other last name uh like but the the girl the woman who plays sabine she's a great actress she gets sabine down perfectly um estefani or estefani sorry um who plays ezra gets him down perfectly um lars mickelson is great as thrawn like i mean th- this and this gave me a lot of what I wished I got in Kenobi. Like we got, we see all these characters from Rebels in live action. We got those Clone Wars flashbacks, which those will always hold a special place in my heart. Yeah. I, so I, I love this series. I really do. But it's not, and 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 I'm also kind of just saying this. So like when we eventually get a season two or a continuation, it's not yet good enough to be on par with Clone Wars or Rebels. And honestly, I'm just saying that so that it will look me in the eye and say, okay, Nathan, I'm going to prove you wrong. And, (laughs) and give me something that does put it on par with Clone Wars and Rebels. Yeah. And I mean, we're going to get there one day. It's, It's just a matter of when we'll get it, you know? Yeah. Like when I get more continuations of like, the Shin Hadi and Balin Skull characters. I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll honestly like. It'll be perfect. Yeah. But 
we'll see. I mean, I'm I'm still going to give the like as a whole. I would probably give this series an eight out of ten. Just um, which uh, which I mean, kind of like I and I would probably if I'm ranking this in like all of my Star Wars favorite media stuff. Like, uh, so I did. I said this at the end of our Rebels. I put Clone Wars in my top 10 mm-hmm. rebels is in my top 15 although the more i think about it it's kind of hugging that the entrance into my yeah. top 10 the more i think about it like it's almost there honestly like if when i look at it in hindsight this is in my top 20 um but hopefully with time it'll much like rebels like you know with more hindsight it could be a lot better it's just yeah. not there yet but what did you think Riz? and i'm sorry I, I just spoke for like five minutes but no you're good um i i'm gonna have to give it a score i'm gonna have to get it to nine and my my reason's a little bit more selfish because i think the clone wars payoff warrants a higher score it's not perfect. There's a lot of faults I have with, you know, at least the finale and some of the stuff that I wish is a little bit more fleshed out and more explained. But honestly, this season delivers so many things that I've just been wanting. Mm-hmm. We finally get Ahsoka back. We finally understand where Ezra and Thrawn have been. We're getting the formation of the story in between the original and the sequel trilogy and it's looking really good and i mean maybe this is enough to make the sequels a bit more bearable i don't know yet but if feloni keeps going the way he's going and he does the same thing again where he makes the prequels beloved by making the Clone Wars and Rebels, then maybe he can do the same thing here. It's just time will tell. Yeah. But I I definitely love the Soka. This is something I'll come back to multiple times, I think. Um, I don't think I'd ever really want to go back to Book of Boba Fett all that much or certain parts of Mando as much, but this is something I'll definitely go back and visit. Yeah, I'll definitely revisit this. Uh, yeah. prob- probably even more. Like, I've I've watched Kenobi like two or three times. Well, I watched it when it originally came out, and then yeah, and then I was on vacation with my wife, and I were on vacation with my mom, and she really wanted to watch it, so we yeah. watched it while we were on vacation. So I- I'll talk more about Kenobi when we do that series, yeah. but I, I-, I will- I'll probably revisit this more and. Who knows? I mean, maybe when I revisit it, knowing everything that's going to happen and I can pay attention to like the smaller details, maybe I'll end up liking this even more. But yeah, again, I gave it an eight. So I'm not really I'm not going to bad mouth it too much because this yeah. still gave me a lot. And I get like this show gave me Clone Wars flashbacks, something that I wanted in Kenobi and I didn't get. You gave me Clone Wars flashbacks. I'm sorry, but you win. That, yeah. <laughs> I, but, um, I mean, there's yeah, a reason I, why my wife is incredibly sad that she didn't record me reacting to some of these things, because that yeah. would have been like YouTube video material, <laughs> my reactions. Yep. So. But uh, any last thoughts, Nate? We're getting close to that time. Just hoping that uh, I, I really enjoyed Ahsoka. I hope we get a season two, but no matter how we, they opt to... Uh, to um, uh, continue this, I trust in Dave Filoni. Yeah, same. And I'm going to close out by saying, in Filoni we trust. Yep. There, there was uh, two things, uh, just these references that I never got a chance to uh, bring up, which I'll go over really quick. Uh, uh, Hu Yang actually refers to Kanan's uh, real name, Caleb Doom, at one point. Yeah. And uh, when Ezra is making his new lightsaber, he actually is given an emitter. He says, man, this this is too narrow. I feel like that's a reference to the fact that like people complain about the fact that the lightsaber blades are really narrow in Rebels. Mm-hmm. That, that seems to be a joke. I, I could see so, that. 
yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. But uh, yeah, Ahsoka. We're we're happy to see Ahsoka go, and uh, you know, because it was a great show. We're happy to have watched it, and uh, we, I mean, in Filoni, we trust the Force is strong yeah. with Dave Filoni. All right, so uh, guys, that uh, wraps up our uh, review series of uh, Ahsoka. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the show as much as we do. Um, we're um, we're gonna. We're not going to be doing things uh, once a week anymore, we're, but we are going to be giving you guys things at least multiple times a month. Yeah. Uh, I have some book reviews that are backlogged. Like I said earlier in this podcast, when we were going off on a tangent, I am I am making it my priority to finish Shadows of the Sith in a week. And uh, I'm going to also be reading the books uh, Dooku Jedi Lost. Well, it's not a book. It's the script to an audio drama, but not a really – not really huge uh, – I'm also I've also um, bought the first book in the High Republic series, so I'm going to be checking that out too. Riz is of course doing Thrawn yeah. alliances, so I got a lot of uh, things prepared for you guys. And uh, at some point, so uh, hopefully soon, we're going to be back to reviewing uh, other series. We're going to do Clone Wars. We're going to do all seasons of The Mandalorian individually, of course. Uh, we're going to do Bad Batch, uh, and we'll do Resistance at some point, and maybe the distant future. <laughs> Um, but with that there's said, also, there's also a surprise that'll be coming out next week. Maybe that Nathan hasn't even been told about yet. Oh, so okay. stay That's tuned. Awesome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we, we still got a lot of things planned for you just because Ahsoka has ended right now. doesn't mean that the Jedi squadron podcast is going anywhere. We got a lot of stuff planned for you. Uh, so yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you know, please leave some comments down below with what you thought of Ahsoka. We'll bring attention to your comments at the beginning of all of our podcasts. Uh, like this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're not already subscribed. If you're listening to this on spot uh, on Spotify or iTunes, uh, first of all, we thank you guys so much for listening to us there. You know, you can leave us like us like rank out of five stars. Uh, we appreciate all your feedback, and you can leave us feedback at AnimeSecrets.org. So that about wraps this up. We'll see you guys next time when we. Uh, in our next podcast. I'm not sure which one that'll be, but we're definitely going to be bringing stuff to you still at least multiple times a month. And we'll see you guys next time when that happens. But until that time, you guys stay safe. We love you and may the force be with you.